All right, guys, Greaves here again. I'm um, just gonna go over two quick things here for you. You know, normally we would take care of this stuff in class, but you know, uh, extraordinary times calls for some extraordinary measures, right? So let's just um, take a look at two quick things. All right, so uh, I don't know how to really, really, really call this, but uh, let's just let's just call it branches of a circuit, right? right. Okay, branches of a circuit. And I really mean a parallel. It's a series is quite easy, right? But let, let's just say, I, I, wanna, I wanna make a, I wanna draw something for a second. Let's just say I have a real simple, right? Parallel circuit, right? All right I could have drawn that better, but there we go, right? You know what, I'm not gonna do math. We're not talking about math here. Let's get the concept of what's happening here. All right, let's suppose I get a current that comes out of here. I'm gonna make it, let's make this current total, let's just call it um, 10 amps, okay? Now what happens in a, a parallel circuit? Remember, the total current, I total, is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus dot, dot, dot. So what does that mean? Let's see if we can understand what that means a little bit, okay? What happens, right? Remember, at this point, right? At this point, it's, by the way, it's a parallel because it, there's more than one path, right? So at this point right here, I, I can get this current, or I should say this current has choices, right? So what can it do? It could branch off this way. I'll call that I1, right? But it can go forward up here too as well, right? So if I have three, remember I total, I1 plus I plus two plus three, if one I1 branches off, what is this value here? Well, here's I total. It's going to be equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. I1 kind of branched off. So what does this have to be? Well, this has to be I what? 2 plus I3. What happened when it gets right here? I'm going to call this resistor 2. What's going to peel off now? I2 goes to the right. And what's left? Well, it looks like I have I what? 3 moving this way. Right? So what happens, I3 goes around the circuit, or I should say through this resistor, right? Gets to that point right there. Well, what's meeting right there? I2. So I3 and I2 meet here. And what do I have coming down here? I2 plus I3. Then what happens, right? I have I2 plus I3 meeting here. Meets up with what? I3. And lo and behold, I have I total again, which is now going to be I1 plus I2 plus I3. So let's take a look at how we sometimes problems might be asked. Uh, they're kind of weird. And actually, believe it or not, some of them are in the homework that I asked you to do the other day. Right? So let's just take a look. Right? And I'm going to talk about this in a minute as well. I'm taking a look at a little section of, of, of a... Um, of a... Uh, circuit, by the way, I don't care what's going on anywhere else, right? Let me tell you, let's just say that this is uh, 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 four amps, I measured it, right? Let's say this is what? Three amps, okay? All right, well, you know what? If that's the case, what could this read? What could this be? Well, there's a couple ways that we could look at it, right? Well, what's happening? By the way, this really is, what's happening here is really conservation of charge, guys, right? Charge can't be created or destroyed. It's just kind of moved from one place to another. So let's, we have to, to figure out what this could be, right? I have to assign some directions, kind of. So let's say I have a current coming this way, and I have a current coming this way. Well, what's happening? This guy's going to the right, right? This guy's going to the left. They're meeting, right? And I have these two now currents going down this way. So what is this value right here? Well, if you're going to say 7, I think you're right. So the I here has to be equal to what? 4 amps plus 3 amps. That's because I'm assigning these two coming down this way. So it could be, right, that this is 7 amps. Or what else could it read? All right, well, I'm telling you that this is 4, and I'm telling you that this is 3, Right? And remember, a charge can't be created or destroyed, right? It could just be moved around from one place to another. Well, I have three and I have four. Hmm. 
I'm going to say, I bet you I have this guy coming this way, right? Which means if this is coming this way, I have to get three plus something to be equal to what? Four. So it looks like I have some value here, meeting here and going this way. And if you're getting it one amp, you are correct. Okay, so what are the possible answers for this ammeter in this configuration? Well, it could be seven amps or one amp, just depending on the situation, right? You gotta take a look at sometimes problems do uh, kind of pop up like that. Okay, so like I said, normally we would cover this in class, but I figure I'll take a minute or two to do it now. One more little thing, okay? Now, uh, part two problems might want you to draw circuits. We went over the series circuit. We went over the circuit diagram and stuff like that. But what we really need to look at is meters, right? And where you place meters in, right, a circuit. All right, so let's go back to, all right, this symbol right here, and this is my ammeter, okay? Now, ammeter, right, from your reference table measures current. Now, I'm going to say something that's going to be weird. Go back and listen to it a couple times if you have to, right? It won't make sense until I draw it out. But an ammeter is placed in series, okay? Just let me, say what I, let, me, let me show you what I mean by that, in series. All right, so let's give a circuit, right? And by the way, I'm going to give a parallel circuit, right? And I do not care what type of circuit I'm making. It doesn't matter. All I want to know is, right, where do I place an ammeter for values to measure things? All right, ammeter is always placed in series. All right, so let's call this R1, R2, and R3. Let's call this the voltage again, right, the source. So there's V total, and here is what? I. All right, so what's going to happen? We talked already. We know that this current's going to come off. It's going to branch off this way, some this way, and some this way. So how do I measure the current going through R1? Right? Well, I want an ammeter, and it must be placed in series. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy here, and we're going to kind of pull it out of the circuit for a second. I don't care what's going on, on the left. I don't care what's going on, on the right. I just know I have this this R1. Would you agree that I'm getting some current I want through the resistor? Well, if I want to measure the current, I have to place an ammeter in series with this resistor. All right? If I draw that there, guess what? These two guys are now in series. Why are they in series? Because by, by definition, there's only one path to get from, let's call this point A, Let's call this point B. The current is going from A to B. It only has one way to get there. So by definition, ammeter A is in series with resistor one. Even though I'm in a parallel circuit, I don't care. Does that make sense? So this ammeter is in series with this resistor because there's only one path right between the two. If I wanted the current through R2, I would make an ammeter there. How about if I wanted the total current? Total current? Well, we said before, that's the total current right there, right? So this guy goes up, while well, it comes back down here, the total current. So I could place my ammeter here or here. Makes sense? All right, so this is where I'd place an ammeter. It must be in series with the resistor or the object that I want to measure. One last thing, voltmeter. Where do I place voltmeters? Well, voltmeters are going to be in parallel. Okay? What do I mean by parallel? All right, I'm going to draw another circuit here. And I'm purposely drawing what type of circuit? Well, a series circuit, not parallel. Okay? I'm drawing a series circuit. Let's call that R1. Let's call that R2. Let's call that R3. All right, here's my voltage source, here's my current. And would you agree that some of this voltage are gonna be R1, R2, and R3? Yeah, I agree. How about this? How do I measure the voltage across R2? Well, I need to be in parallel. So what I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna take this guy, 
I'm gonna pull that out of my circuit, right? Not caring what's on the right here or not caring what's on the left. Let's call that R2. And I'm going to measure what the voltage. Well, voltage must be in parallel with what I wanna measure. Well, what is parallel? Here's point A, here's point B. Parallel is more than one path. So there is my voltmeter in parallel with my R2, right, to find the voltage across. Remember, parallel, more than one path. What that means is here comes the current I. When it gets to this point, well, it could go up and around or it could go straight through. So it is in parallel. Truth be told, the current cannot go around. The resistance of voltmeter is really, really high. It's forced to go through here. Is that okay? So I just wanted to give you these little two bits of things that might help you along the way. All right, guys, see you later.